Want to help support Juno Cigars? Two great ways to do it, smokeagoinshop.com and on Patreon. So click those links in the description below and help support this great cigar channel. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Joe at Jonas Cigars back for one final review in this dark, bleak, black month of January. I can't wait for it to end, so I'm going to send it off with one final cigar review before we get into the month of February. And remind ourselves that winter is still a long way from being over. But we're not going to think about that right now. Right now we're going to think about the next cigar, and that cigar is the Drew Estate M81 Blackened in Robusto. For those of you who haven't been paying attention to this particular release news, this is a three-way collaboration between Jonathan Drew of Drew Estate Cigars, James Hetfield of Metallica, the frontman and the, and the guitarist of Metallica, and of course, the blender and master distiller of blackened American whiskey, Rob Dietrich. Um, this is a cigar that they said they wanted to collaborate to come up with something that they're very passionate about, and this is supposed to be a cigar that uh, goes very well with blackened American whiskey. Well, I'm not drinking that today. I don't typically drink much of anything when I'm doing reviews, but I'll see what this one is all about. The big key thing here is this is 100% Maduro wrap or the Maduro tobaccos in the entirety of this blend. So the uh, long fillers are Nicaraguan and Pennsylvania Maduro uh, long fillers, including uh, lots of Lajero leaf from the Pennsylvania part of that filler. We also have a Connecticut River Valley broadleaf Maduro binder and then a Mexican San Andreas wrapper leaf on the outside. Looking at the cigar, actually not a bad looking stick. Pretty simple band work. I left the foot band there. Simple blackened main band. Simple, what is that? Just a double cap on the top. Pretty nice looking pack and roll. Kind of a medium pack at this point. A few noticeable veins. And you can see the seams, but they're decently constructed. Pre-light aromas. I'm getting a lot of sweet natural tobacco. Some oak notes, leather, and maybe some slight dried fruit notes off of this and off the foot. It's even less pronounced, but I'm getting natural tobacco and oak, and little bits of leather. All right, let's go ahead and get this one cut. Check out the cold draw. On the cold draw, I'm getting lots of prune notes. Fairly oily too already on the cold draw. Other than that, that's really, that's about it. Just kind of a prune, oily, natural tobacco off of the cold draw. All right, let's go ahead and take this foot band off. I'm gonna light up one of these cedar spills and light this thing the old fashioned way. Let's see what we can find out. Off the first puff, very nice draw. Very relaxed, lots of smoke output, medium full to full body, lots of oil texture on here. We're getting some very, very dark chocolate, like 76% cacao level sort of chocolate. Bittersweet, there's earth, charred oak notes. Black pepper for sure. Hmm. There is a slight note that kind of reminds me of like a toasted sesame oil. And that kind of lingers on the finish too. It's a fairly long and oily finish. Anything else going on in there? Retrohale is fairly spicy with lots of charred oak and black pepper, and it's a fresh, cracked black pepper. I kind of like that. All right, pretty nice start. Let's go until I get a little further into the first third. See you then.
All right, 10 minutes in, well into the first third. A decent looking burn line. It's not perfect. It's got a little bit of a slant there, but I've definitely seen worse and it's not something that I'm too worried about. This ash is pretty solid. Not a lot of flakes or cracks in it. It's nice and white. And you can actually see the tooth from the wrapper still on the ash, which is kind of neat. I always like those little effects. Flavors, very full body now. And even though it's not quite so heavy, it's in the oil, it's got a very heavy feeling, dense body to it in the mouth. Pretty hard on the black pepper at this point. It's not what I would call out of hand, but I kind of wish the black pepper was a little less than what it is right now. We're definitely getting some really dark flavors. I'm thinking stuff like diesel fuel, charred oak, lots of black pepper, and very, very dark espresso, kind of a bittersweet espresso at this point. On the retrohale, kind of a, a wet wood, lots of black pepper, mm, that black black pepper got a little bit of a kick there mm. but the black pepper aroma on the retro is actually quite good and lots of dark cocoa coming through on the retro hail as well all right we'll see how it goes we'll let this go until we get about halfway through the cigar i'll see you then all right 30 minutes in just about at the halfway point Burn has corrected a little bit. The ash literally just fell off a few minutes ago. First time it fell off. So pretty impressive ash strength. I was getting a little worried because something was happening to the palate when I was smoking this cigar. You ever get that, sometimes it happens when you smoke cigars where they're burning too hot. This one wasn't burning too hot, but you know that feeling it leaves you on the tongue where it kind of feels like you scorched your taste buds a little bit? That's what it was starting to feel like, and I was getting a little worried, like, ah, shit, is this going to be that already before I even get to the halfway point, and now I'm going to stop tasting things as well? Well, mercifully, that started to slow down a little bit. The black pepper has come down, thankfully. If it got any higher than that, I don't know what I was going to do, because that was going to be about the only thing I was going to be tasting at that point, but it has come down, and the flavors have kind of leveled off a little bit, which has been kind of nice. Still full-bodied starting to get kind of a dark bready sort of flavor coming through on the draw getting a little bit of some salted nuts coming through there and still getting some of those diesel and charred oak notes but they aren't quite so pronounced or forward as they were in the first part of the cigar on the retrohale whoo give me a sec That is a very spicy retrohale, and it lasts a while. It's a mixture of black and very zingy white pepper. A little bit of some dank earth and wood notes coming through. And I'm also starting to get some chili pepper notes at times, kind of like a phantom note on the draw after a retrohale. And every now and then I've been getting a few fleeting notes of what reminds me of a very dried, almost candied cherry sort of flavor. So it has actually improved a little bit from the first third as far as the balance of flavors were concerned. Still not exactly where I would like it to be as far as the flavor dynamic, but it's what the cigar is supposed to be, I think. They said they wanted to be extremely full-bodied and full-flavored. Well, it's definitely full-bodied, uh, and the flavors are pretty strong. I just wish there was a little bit more balance at this point. Well, just deal with it as it goes, and uh, I'll catch up with you as I get towards the end of the cigar. See you then. All right, we are one hour in, down into the final third here. Burn is pretty good. Ever since that first third ended, the burn line has been pretty much perfect. Ash has been holding on really strong, only ashed it twice. Draw. Construction has all been very, very good. Flavors, still full. Body's still full, although the oil has really come down. It's more of a fluffier texture now on the draw. Flavors, I'm getting predominantly a lot of sort of wet and dank earth, some musty wood notes, 
So lots of minerality, minerality and a heavy amount of black pepper still. On the retro hill. Still pretty spicy. Not the spiciest it's been, but still very much up there. Ooh. Wow, that white pepper really zings at the end there. Still getting black pepper, still getting musty wood, and a lot of minerality. So, final thoughts on the cigar. I wish it had a little bit more nuance. But again, I kind of knew what I was expecting when I heard that James Hetfield uh, was a part of the collaboration of what he wanted this cigar to be. And it's titled Blackened. You know, it's going to be a pretty intense experience. And I know there's going to be a lot of people out there that really dig this cigar. Not my favorite, but it's still something I think is worth trying. Um, because I think it's important to try some of these things that are just like all Maduro cigars. I think it's important to educate your palate a little bit as a cigar smoker if you really want to get into this. And this is, was an interesting one because, uh, yeah, you know, I always look to see what tobacco can do. And tobacco can get pretty damn dark tasting and very spicy. Uh, and this is a great example of that. Um, there was some things to be enjoyed in this. For example, uh, I mean, the draw on this was really very pleasing. It was a very relaxed draw, gave you a lot of smoke, and you never had to worry about it uh, going out. You never had to worry about it uh, causing too much of a burn issue. It was constructed pretty well. The flavors, if you like really bold, really dark, really spicy flavors, and I know there's a lot of cigar uh, lovers out there who do, you're going to dig this. If you want something that's a little bit more balanced, a little bit more nuanced, that gives you a little bit more of an interesting uh, flavor experience, maybe not for you. And if you don't really like the spice or the nicotine, you definitely don't want to try it. You definitely aren't going to like this one as much. I'm not saying don't try it. I never say don't try a cigar. Try everything you can um, because it's important, like I said, to try as much as you can, figure out what you like, what you don't like, and you just have a more uh, educated approach when you're going to smoke your next cigar. And this one definitely gives you something to learn from. But thank you so much for joining me for this review. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Click that icon in the bottom right corner if you happen to be watching on YouTube. If you happen to be watching on Rumble, just look for the subscribe button towards the top right of the screen. Please don't forget to follow Jonas Cigars on Instagram. And please don't forget to follow me on Cigar Public. Let me know what you thought of the review in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Give me a thumbs down if you hated it. I don't care. Just one honesty. Until next time, everybody, smoke a good one.